I just wanted to give a quick rundown of my trip to Rwanda last summer and my personal experience with uh, Pico Rwanda. Um, I'm hoping to keep this short. I could talk about uh, my experience for hours really, but trying to limit this to just a few minutes and, and really just cover the highlights. Um, but I, I had a wonderful time over there and, and pretty much all of it was due to the hospitality of Pastor John and his wife Robin, who graciously hosted me during my time there and even went so far as to plan an itinerary for me. And John even uh, was my safari guide one day there in Akagera National Park and uh, pretty much spotted all the wildlife we saw there. I don't know, he'd see an elephant from two miles away hiding behind a tree and uh, it was pretty remarkable. So. Uh, yeah, I knew Rwandans were famed for their hospitality uh, going in, but the, the level I was shown there really exceeded all of my expectations. And uh, really, I the only thing I had to do there was uh, that was difficult was during when I was passing immigration, they made me write down John's last name on the papers. And uh, that was a bit of a struggle, but I think I more or less... I more or less got it down within a letter or two. Um, but yeah, I would be remiss if I didn't just first and foremost uh, talk about how uh, impactful it was to spend so much time with John and Robin. And that they're, they're incredible people and they're, they work so hard to uh, help these communities in Rwanda, in Rwanda um, really achieve change from within. And uh, I don't think I saw John take a break the whole time I was there. Uh, if he wasn't in the community or, or at the office, he was on the phone with someone or he was uh, planning the next day. Uh, it's just, it was, it was really a sight to see. And, and honestly, I think he could, he'd be well served to maybe take a few breaks now and then. But uh, knowing how driven he is, I don't know if that's a really realistic. Um, but yeah, it was very humbling to see John and Robin work so hard, not for uh, personal gain or status, but but really just because they cared that much about the communities in Rwanda. Uh, and, and one of the days I was there, I was able to visit Nyanji, which I hope I pronounced correctly, uh, one of the Picos, uh, one of several Pico sites in Rwanda. Uh, and I met with the community and they told me their story about uh, where they were before they had met John and what they'd, they'd been able to accomplish uh, once the John had contacted them and they had started implementing some of uh, Pico's principles. And they told me that they had gone from a, uh, a group of poor farmers uh, with very little collaboration or interaction. In fact, uh, they often undermined each other um, to a cohesive unit that was working together uh, and pooling all of their talents to build houses for each other in the community. Uh, they, uh, in talking with each other, they found out that that was one of their biggest needs. And um, in speaking with them, I really could see the pride come through uh, as they talked about the work that they did, as they talked about the direction their community was going uh, as they talked about the fact that they were going to send their kids to school, the kids were going to be the first people to go to school in the community. And what struck me about it was that this was really lasting change that was happening here. And it was change that was coming from within, you know, this was, this, this is more than just going in the community and building a school, you know, this was uh, a community coming together and saying, we're, we're going to, figure out the school on our own. We're going to, because that's a priority for us. Um, and uh, before my trip, I had contacted Pastor John and I had asked him, uh, is there anything I can bring with me for the community? Uh, maybe that they don't have access to in Rwanda. And I was thinking something along the lines of uh, soccer balls or something like that. Um, he had told me, yes, bring notebooks and pens for them to to write in. Um, and I was like, okay, it's not as exciting as I thought, but uh, yeah, no problem, I can do that. So I had brought with me about 20 notebooks and uh, a couple packages of pens. Um, and I wanted to bring some just as a, as a gesture. And 
they were so gracious for the gift um, to the point where I really felt uncomfortable because, you know, for me, all, all that took was a, a quick trip to the store and a few bucks and just threw it in my bag and I was good to go. Uh, and being present with this community and seeing all the hard work that they had put in, all the hard work that John had put in, and my measly contribution with a few notebooks being celebrated so much was, uh, I felt really uncomfortable for a few moments there, but um, that, that feeling quickly subsided as uh, I talked more with them about, about their plans for the future. And what was really neat to hear about this community on top of all the hard work they were doing to build these homes was the fact that they were realizing for the first time that they had a voice in the government. They were entitled to ask for things on behalf of, uh, or ask for things from their government. Um, and then so while I was there, there was another visitor to the community, um, a local government official, who had just told them that as a result of their advocacy efforts, the government was awarding them a plot of land that was gonna enable them to expand their presence and build even more homes. So it's some really, some really promising news for the community. And so that was, that was my experience in the field. Um, like I said, it's only one of several communities in Rwanda, but um, just an incredible place, incredible country. Uh, it's come really far uh, from the genocide in the early to mid nineties. And I think Rwanda is a perfect place for Pico because as, as one of Pico's mottos is, it's unlocking the power of people. And, there is so much potential in that country and um, the, the people are, are so amazing there. Um, so it was, it was a real honor to see, uh, not just hear secondhand about how great Pico is, I'd always heard about that growing up, but to see actually how it works in person. And uh, it's, you know, I don't have a lot of experience in the nonprofit world, but it just, it just makes a lot of sense. You go into a community and you get them working together um, to make a lasting difference. And that, that was the takeaway. And, and you know what, it's also uh, it made an impact on me. And uh, since, I've, since I got back and I've been in DC, I've made a conscious effort to start uh, volunteering here. As a result of my experience, I felt very motivated to get involved in my own community and to seek out uh, areas where I could provide assistance to enable people to, to make lasting changes in their own lives. So it's, it's, really a, it's really a great cause, uh, something that I, again, had the good fortune to experience um, and, and, and can't say uh, enough good things um, about the organization and about, more importantly, the people within the organization. Um, so Pastor John, thanks again for all of your uh, hospitality and kindness. And uh, I, I can't wait to go back and visit Rwanda again, and I hope to do so over the next uh, few years. So thank you very much for your time and uh, enjoy.